Welcome to tutorial 14 part 2. Make sure that you've seen the first part of this tutorial before you continue on here. So we've been working with user actors and we've seen already how you can take several Isadora actors, condense them into one user actor, and also have individual control of whatever parameters you would choose uh, in that user actor. But there's another thing that you can use user actor for that are very powerful and that's to create what we would call in the programming terms global variables that is an unchanging set of values that is for uh, applies to the entire show and that's what I want to show you how to do here because as many situations especially when you're having to focus a projector at a particular location that you want to have it in different scenes throughout the show but you only have to want to edit it once and make sure that it's the same and that's what this allows you to accomplish so I click on toolbox group number eight and I get a user actor because to illustrate this I'm going to take the projector showing this left image and we're going to put it inside the user actor so I select that projector which is this one here and I say cut then I double click the user actor here and paste that projector inside of course I need an input to get the video in so I click again on toolbox group number eight click on user input and connect that here Double click the user input so I can call it video in, type that, and press OK. All right, so now if I save and update all on that and I connect it, it looks exactly like it did before because I just copied and pasted. But what I'm going to do is go in and make some changes to this to help us really see what's going on. I'm going to set the left input back to zero and I'm going to zoom it in a little bit and spin it a wee bit and I'm also going to turn the perspective on to make it go back into space okay so just check out that particular configuration of the image now I'll close say save and update all so let's just say for a moment that we have a set in our production and that image is now perfectly within the edges of a surface that's on that set and now we want to do the same uh, shape but in a different scene. So I click here on the scene list to deactivate the first scene. Go to the scenes menu and say insert scene. And then I'm going to add a movie player and a but and I would normally add a projector, but instead I'm going to go back to the first scene, grab this user actor now go back here and I'll paste that so that when I hook this up and now I'm going to show the media window so I can see which movie I'd like to play let's do number 15 okay there's no effects anymore right we took out the user actor with the effects now I'm just playing the image directly into that shape and of course since I just copied and pasted it's exactly the same but here's the key feature now you can imagine we're on the road, we've torn down our set and we've set up in another city and it's a little bit slightly different configuration or the projector might be in a different place. And you want to adjust that and you want to adjust it for all 40 or 50 or 100 scenes of your show depending on what's going on. That's what this user actor makes very easy. I double click this user actor, I go in and I change the zoom a little bit, I'm going to change the spin a little bit and change the perspective a lot so that it's very clear that it's different right that's quite a different looking image so we've aligned this now the way that the set is set up for this particular performance and I say save and update all okay but the great thing is it's this shape here but when I go to scene two where I have a copy of that user actor it's now in exactly the same place and the reason for that is if I double click this user actor you'll see here that all of these numbers that are inputs to the projector are not connected to a user input that means when I edit them here and I say save and update all every copy of this user actor is updated in exactly the same way and that's what I mean by global variables it means that I change these numbers here and say save and update all every copy will behave in exactly the same way so you can imagine if you have a complicated setup with your projections that being able to take advantage of this is very important but it also makes distinct the kinds of uh, numbers where you actually do have them connected to a user input because they are individual 
So for instance, again, the actor I'm pointing out right now with my cursor, that's the live input from the camera, and there's my hand. The saturation is set to zero, and the glow is set to zero, right? So if I copy these three actors, copy, go to the second scene, and then choose paste, okay, so far it's exactly the way it was. But now I'm going to turn the saturation all the way up, and I'm going to turn the glow all the way up. So now I have both the color and the saturate and the glow effect happening at the same time. Yet if I go back to the other patch, those two factors, the saturation and glow, are the way they were set before. So in other words, because I have those two parameters connected to user inputs, those aren't remembered. Instead, every time I come into the scene, whatever I set them to on the outside of the user actor, that's how they're going to be set on the inside. So it's up to you to choose which part, which parameters you would like to have be externally controlled, which parameters you would like to be internally controlled, and the same for every copy of the user actor. Okay, so, so far so good, but now one of the things that is important to know is that not only can you add user inputs for numbers, but you can also add user outputs. So I'm going to double click on this user actor again to open it. And now the fact is we don't really have anything that's producing a number in this patch, but I'm going to fake that out. I'm going to use an actor here called Calc Brightness. This actually reports how bright the video image is. And if I just take the source video directly into that, that's the one coming directly from the camera, you can see right now it has a brightness of 31. But if I put my hand into it, it's now gone up to 35. That's because there's more white in the image. Okay? So this actor is actually useful for analyzing things that are in the frame and how bright they are. So now I want to have that number appear because for whatever reason that's part of my patch and it's important. So I can then click on toolbox group number 8 and get a user output. Now we already did that for the video, but I just wanted to illustrate the fact that you can also get a number coming from that. So now if I attach that user output, and we call it brightness, like so, and then I click the close box and say save and update all. Now you can see that the brightness output is available here in the user actor, and I can use that. So you can see there when my hand goes in close, I get it up to 43. If you wanted to play with that, one thing that you could do for fun is connect that to the intensity output, I'm sorry, the intensity input of the projector. When my hand isn't in the frame, the image isn't so bright. But as I get closer and closer, it gets brighter and brighter. I'm just doing that for purposes of illustration. So the user actor is a very powerful way for you to condense a bunch of Isadora actors into a smaller space to be able to have uh, the same functionality repeated again and again that you can change and maintain that functionality throughout the entire program. And it's a critical way to be able to have this notion of global variables or a setting that persists throughout the entire program. I encourage you to read the chapter on user actors. There's some other important features like being able to add the user actors into the toolbox so that you can easily access them for things you use all the time. But that covers the most important features.